I want to read something to you guys. The other day, I had a vegan attacking me non-stop and would not quit. And it seems like the bigger my channel gets, the more I run into that. So, I'm going to post a link below about a friend of mine um, on the carnivore group. He's not really a friend, but I'm hoping that we it, it grows into a friendship. He was vegan. And he was vegan for like almost four and a half, five years. And he just switched to a carnivorous diet. And he's already getting stronger and feeling better. His digestive tract is healing. He did an excellent video, and um, I will post that in the link here. I'm going to give him some limelight because he's a, an excellent guy. Uh, the passage that I'm going to read is, is from Romans. So there, the Chris, if you're not a believer, I apologize. This is something that's important to me, and um, I want you to know about me, my life, what I believe, and where I come from as well. So please don't leave any nasty comments below. I know some of you are atheists. Some of you are um a different type of religion or whatever but that's that's fine i accept that but don't don't mention my religion to me and ask me to stop doing that i've had that happen in the past and i don't appreciate that uh i would not do that to you so i would expect you please not do that to me uh the other day there was a vegan that was talking about how uh they were they're a believer they're a christian and they don't think that it uh, that that meat was ever an option that you shouldn't kill another animal because that was basically di disrespecting jesus christ and they were referencing romans 14 and I said wait a second you're not right because Romans 14 doesn't say that well here it is the weak and the strong except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over dis one person's faith allows them to eat anything but another person who whose faith is weak eats only vegetables the one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does for God has accepted who are you to judge someone else, someone else's servant to their own master? Servants stand and fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another person considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their mind, whoever regards one day as special, so to the Lord. Whoever, whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. Flipping the page. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Why do you treat them in, with... For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord. Every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will, will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up our mind not to put a stumbling block or an obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus Christ, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, joy, Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace, mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean. But it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between you, yourself, and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has thoughts, whoever has doubts, is condemned if they eat. Because their eating is not from faith, and everything faith does not come or every and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So if you believe in eating meat, you eat meat. If you don't believe in eating meat, you don't eat meat. God gave us food to use. The elder crowd believed that meat was cleansed in an, uh, uh, basically in the, in the presence of an idol or 
for an idol because God was the one that created he was the idol newer generation came along and said you know what I don't believe that I don't believe that meat is clean and I don't believe it was sacrificed in the presence of an idol um, so therefore the meat is not clean eat vegetables God never said you were wrong for doing that but what he did say was don't judge each other for doing what you do both foods are given for nutrition if I eat meat in front of you and you're a vegetarian, I should not sustain, or I should not continue to do that if it makes you feel comfortable or uncomfortable. I should wait, not be in your presence, not make you uncomfortable because we are Christians. We're supposed to love, like each other, treat treat each other as thy neighbor, as thyself. And if we're doing that, that's fine. But I am I am not to make you feel uncomfortable because of what I do. So basically. I'm free to do that, just not in your presence if you don't like what I'm doing. And I kind of agree with that. I wouldn't do that anyway. I would fast or I would wait until I could get back to my own uh, daily living because I would have to know. I would typically know what kind of lifestyle you live anyway, and I wouldn't do that out of disrespect. I would not do that. That would be very disrespectful because if you're a person that's vegan or whatever and I'm hanging around with you, obviously I know you. I wouldn't disrespect you like that. So in the Bible it states, you do what you want. You've been given the right to do that. It's been cleansed for you to do that. You pick, you choose, it's your choice. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to use it as fuel and it's food, it's already been made clean. Use it as fuel. That's it. That's the message. So for those of you that think that you've got it figured out, the vegans that are on my page that give me the thumbs down and stuff on some of the most innocent videos, you guys aren't doing yourself any justice by being here stalking my page or anybody else's. It's in the Bible. You can't lie about that. I mean, it's in black and white. I just read it. It's in every edition. It says in there that it is allowed. So if you're a believer and you're going around telling people that that's not in the Bible, it's not allowed, it's a sin, you're the sinner. You're the liar. It's in the Bible. This message about is about what Romans 14 reads and how the other day I was attacked and the guy was throwing all these verses at me saying that that's not in the Bible. The Bible didn't say eat meat. Well, yeah, it does. It's in there. Read it and weep. All right, guys. I'm going to head to the gym. Take care. Keto on, carnival on. Remember, this is your life. you got to live it. Try to do it the healthy way. Look for the link below. Vegan turning a carnivore story. Thanks, guys. God bless.